On today's show, Tesla gets set to deliver the first Model Ys to customers in just two weeks' time. Rematz gets its C2 on the track and showcases its new active aero prototype. And one vertical takeoff and landing e-taxi company uses its electric aircraft to help in the fight against coronavirus around the world. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. We are 100% Kiwi and we're 50% community owned. Why not switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another Ecotech Roundup show. I am super glad that you're with me. So settle into a comfy chair, get a nice beverage, and we'll get you caught up with all the news in the world of clean cars and clean energy in absolutely no time. After months of sightings in the wild and plenty of hints from Tesla that it was well ahead of original planned schedule, Tesla has officially began planning delivery dates for the Model Y electric SUV. No, it's not coming to New Zealand yet, but so far the signs are good for a far faster rollout than we had for the Model 3. Following Tesla's standard practice, those who ordered a higher spec performance Model Y will get their cars first, with five-seat performance Model Ys now being scheduled for delivery in the US as early as March 15th. This has led us and others to speculate we'll see Model Ys officially first having a customer ceremony, likely to a Tesla investor or board member, on March 14th. That's one year to the day that Tesla first unveiled Model Y. And of course, it's also Pi Day, something that we know Elon Musk probably can't resist. Following its successful crowdfunding round earlier this year, Sono Motors has officially announced a solar partnership with solar specialist Valo, with Valo producing the photovoltaic panels that will be embedded into the bodywork of Sono Motors' first car, the Sono Scion. At the same time, Sono detailed an interim measure for customers who've ordered the Sono Scion, the option to lease a Renault Zoe until their Scion is delivered. While it's not entirely unprecedented, it's something certainly that's rather unusual in the automotive world, and it's a clever way of keeping customers engaged and with transport until their Sono Scion is ready to be picked up. Continuing its ramp up towards its official unveiling in New York in April, Lucid Motors has officially announced its chosen LG Chem as the battery supplier of choice for its upcoming Lucid Air. Of course, LG Chem already supplies electric car battery packs to a number of different automakers, but rather than choose the pouch-based cell that most electric car customers are picking, Lucid opted for LG Chem's cylindrical cells which of course are similar to the cells used in Teslas. Lucid said that it picked these cells because of their efficiency gains over the pouch-based variants, but given that a significant number of former Tesla alum work at Lucid, including of course its CTO and CEO Peter Rawlinson, I'm not surprised that Lucid picked the battery cells it did. In an official interview with Electrek this week, Kia confirmed that it's putting US sales of electric cars on the back burner in order to ensure it meets sales and emission targets in Europe and Canada. A lack of batteries is also being partly blamed. The result? For now, Kia will continue to sell the Nero EV in the states it must do in order to meet zero emission requirements, focusing the majority of its production output on Europe instead, where it's struggling to meet customer demand. While a wider choice of EVs are promised eventually for the US, the closest you'll get to having anything other than a Nero EV in the US right now would be to drive to Canada and buy a 2020 Soul EV, which is being sold in order to satisfy Canadian regulations. And for other countries, well, you're just going to have to wait a lot longer. Over the past 10 years, we've seen photovoltaic solar cell technology improve at an astonishing rate, especially when it comes to cell durability, power density and cost. But now a team of scientists in Russia say they think they can double the efficiency of today's solar cells by using gallium phosphide, a polycrystalline compound semiconductor, alongside nitrogen atoms to produce A3B5 semiconductors within the cell. Initial tests have shown a single photoactive layer, that's the thing that turns sunlight into electricity, has a solar efficiency of 2%, 
but the researchers from St. Petersburg say they believe they can produce a cell with multiple layers designed to capture a much wider spectrum of light, which will, of course, further increase energy output. When it comes to electric hypercars, the Rematz C2 should certainly come to mind. It's blisteringly fast and it has a massive price tag to match, but the Croatian EV does leave others in its wake. And this week we were treated to a new video from Rematz in which the company took two prototypes out on the racetrack to test new features of the upcoming fully sold out 1.5 megawatt car. One of the prototypes focused on handling and suspension, but the second showcased Rematz's new active aero system. Highly sophisticated, the new active aero system keeps the car glued to the tracks in a very impressive way. Production C2s are expected to debut next week at the Geneva Motor Show. Volkswagen may be well underway with production of its ID3 ahead of initial deliveries next quarter. But it turns out that Volkswagen engineers are stumped about how to best go about a software fix that all ID3s need to have before they can be delivered to customers. That's because a glitch in the initial software for the first 10,000 ID3s has essentially made them unsellable. And now reports from Manager Magazine in Germany suggest that thousands of engineers from across the Volkswagen Group are all working together to identify bugs and fix software problems before the promised launch date. The cause of this all? Well, according to inside sources, the car was developed just too quickly for engineers to do a good job. Considering the Dieselgate debacle was originally claimed to have been caused by a just-fix-it move after similar pressure from on high, I can believe it. As it prepares to expand production of its Kona EV outside of South Korea with a new Kona EV production line in the Czech Republic, Hyundai has announced a sizable increase in range of its first long-range EV. Unlike the previous model year Kona EVs, the new 2020 Kona EV, at least the ones made in the Czech Republic, will have a WLTP range of 484 kilometers per charge, up from the 449 kilometers of previous model year cars. That's a sizable improvement for increase in range without an increase in battery capacity. And this suggests that some tweaks are being made for this year to yield that 8% range improvement. Sadly, it's not clear if other markets will benefit from that increased range. As you may or may not know, the current version of the Renault Twingo was developed in collaboration with Mercedes-Benz, resulting in a shared platform between the Twingo and the Smart for 4 ED. To date, the Twingo has only been available as an internal combustion engine model, but now Renault has announced the Renault Twingo ZE, complete with a 22 kilowatt hour battery pack. That might not seem like much, and we don't yet have official pricing, but remember, the Twingo is a tiny city car that's designed not for long distance travel, but for inner city European travel, and that could give customers a lower priced alternative to the Zoe EV. We'll bring you full specs and pricing as and when we have them, but the physical space taken up by that battery shows how far battery packs have come in the last 10 years. As the world comes to terms with the fact that the coronavirus, or COVID-19, is quickly heading towards a pandemic status, there's a big focus on getting medical supplies, staff, and sometimes even patients transported without risking any further infection. And Ehang, a Chinese firm developing the Ehang vertical takeoff and landing air taxis, has stepped up to help its country and the world fight this nasty virus. It's completed a test flight of its Ehang 216 AAV, that's Autonomous Air Vehicle, and says it's ready to be used as an emergency air transport for supplies, staff, and when required, patients. Because it can operate fully autonomously, it says patients can be transported while lowering infection risks, which of course is a very important thing if you're trying to slow the rate of infection down. And finally, the humble potato is a staple in many countries around the world. From the quick and easy baked potato to its use in casseroles, used in roast dinners, and of course the classic fish and chips, it's loved and adored by many, especially our friend Gavin Kiwi Evie Shoebridge. 
And now there's a reason to love your spuds even more, as it turns out that potato starch, when combined with derivatives of corn oil, could improve the capacity and longevity of lithium-ion batteries. You see, researchers in Korea have discovered that these two commonly found ingredients, or derivatives from them, are essential in producing a carbon-silicon composite anode which does not swell during charge or discharge cycles, resulting in a longer life battery with a much higher energy density. Who knew? Potatoes! <laughs> They're not just a quick meal. And on that spudtastic note, that is your lot for today. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. And if you've got feedback, then please do send it our way. Make sure you hit that notification bell while you're at it so you don't miss out on our next episode. And I'm going to ask you, have you made the switch yet to New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company? If you haven't, why not? It's easy to make the change. And if you do, you will help New Zealand go zero emission long before the government's planned 2050 goal. We'll be making some more great content for you all to enjoy next week. But until then, I'm Nikki Gordon-Bluefield. Kakite. See you next time.